Once Upon a Time, director Terry Gilliam made good, interesting movies. Then later on he made The Brothers Grimm. We are in defense of bad movies. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, in defense of bad movies, Sam here with Laura, Hey, Lauren, Hi. and Bobby. Hello. How's everyone doing? So good. Yeah, we're cool. wonderful. It's been a while since I've had to defend a movie. I forgot how much it stings <laughs> when everyone's so negative about the movie you like. As we know, that is the intro that I, I, I make the, the hopefully comedic um, joke. But um, it doesn't necessarily reflect my actual opinion of the movie because I've made negative jokes about um, movies. I've, it should I've be noted respected. also <laughs> that done too. The mindset we're in, we normally don't watch these movies together, and we certainly <laughs> have. I don't think we've ever watched a movie and recorded a thing in the same night. No, uh, I mean, and this is the latest we've ever recorded one. I too, I believe. Yes, it is we're so, getting punchy. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we're getting really tired. We're making really bad jokes. <laughs> Uh, let's just to reset, as I'm going to try to remember to do, uh, we are a, uh, a <laughs> podcast where one of us uh, watches a movie that is generally deemed bad and defends it to everyone else. And this time, our good friend Lauren defended the Brothers Grimm. That's right. You're a good friend, Lauren. Too. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very good friend. Great friend. friend. For a while. We're my, a great friend. Time my, <laughs> my former girlfriend, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> gets real awkward. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so you like this movie? Yes. Don't say it's so cute, thoroughly. <laughs> yes, I do like this movie, Sam. And what was it in on, on Rotten Tomatoes? Like 38%? I don't remember. Something like that. You don't have to look it up. It's okay. Damn. We'll say 38%. Um, <laughs> but if we don't have the true fact, we'll just go boldly. Exactly, yeah. Uh, before we get into it, let's do Laura's... How oh, long do you God. think she needs for this? Uh, um, three minutes. She always surprises <laughs> us because on the really complicated one, she's like, it's a movie about a man and he does stuff. The end. <laughs> Let's, want to give her 20 seconds? I'm looking for Laura to fill me in on this. I want an actual synopsis about what happened. Not just Terry Gilliam crapped all over the celluloid. And Keith, Le- Keith Ledger died is not a point yeah. in your synopsis. <laughs> Darn it. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> so, 20 seconds? Sure. Oh, you've switched over to like a clock looking uh, I'm thing. I'm discovering things about my clock. I have ah, on my stopwatch phone function. All right. Okay. okay. Go. Okay, so this movie is, stars Matt Damon and Heath Ledger as brothers who um, kind or they help out um, people and they pretend that they, that they're bad creatures around and they and they and then anyway they get themselves in the midst of a, a real actual like weird thing happening and so that's the story of the movie. Twenty five seconds. Mm-hmm. Alright, that's okay. Good. Just brothers. Just a random pair of brothers. Like just Yeah, guys yeah. Just hanging out. Any any significance to who <laughs> they are in general? Um <laughs> the Jacob and what was the other name? Wilhelm. Wilhelm. In Laura's defense. Their names are in the title. So if she doesn't mention that in the synopsis, <laughs> the I Grand. guess it's okay. <laughs> brothers Grimm. I know, I just love like the fairy tale. There are a couple the of fairy tales. <laughs> I'm not familiar with the Brothers Grimm fairy tale. Would someone, Lauren, would you like to fill us in? You're not familiar with the no. Brothers Grimm? Mm-mm. Oh, well, that explains why you didn't like the movie then. Cause <laughs> to. Well, let's go back to history in the early 1800s when Germany and was still a principality. This is completely <laughs> true, right? This, this is exactly. <laughs> It's one of those, like, inspired by true events. Oh. So, like, you know, they took some flights of fancy. Mm-hmm. but How every movie is inspired by true events. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> I, oh, you go. No. I mean, are you, you really don't know, like, much about the Brothers Grimm? Mm-mm. Oh, okay. So, sourcing, um, they were, you know, two scholars in Germany in the early 1800s, and they went around collecting folk tales that were just popular in Eastern Europe. And, of course, you know, have led to some of the most popular fairy tales. So Snow White, Rapunzel, Frog Prince. Um, Many of the that? ones that were and referenced. Red, and that's yeah. Sleeping Beauty, Rapunzel. Yeah. Um, yeah okay. Was. And so 
that's the starting Hans, off Hansel point. Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel, yes. That's, it's, Hansel and, and Greta, just, maybe. It's, it's very good, yes. <laughs> and so the movie posits that they were shysters going around, for, like setting up fake hauntings and witches, and they would, you know, ex- stole money from the... Uh, no, they were the John, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Edwards of their time. They were charlatans. Exactly. They were charlatans, if you will. And then, oh, well. of course, they come across a town that's actually bewitched, and there's real enchanted, terrible things happening. Terrible, terrible things, things happening. Yes, indeed. Oh wait, 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 wait. and we have Jonathan Price uh, with a horrible, sexy, sexy, French accent. exaggerated and, French um, accent. Just weird, and like hot. a really weird time, bad guy, like thrown in like, like a about twinkle three in his quarters eye. of the movie, like three quarters of the way through the movie. What? He Who's comes that? in. Yeah, he was there very early on. Yeah, he was in the beginning. Yeah, he, he was the original movie. one who. No, it was the other guy. It was the so other. I haven't been on their phone. No, I wasn't on my phone. <laughs> We've discovered how Laura watches these movies and why she hates I them. I was writing something <laughs> that was not relevant to me. And an email <laughs> to my congressman about <laughs> other things that I was concerned about. about how- the thing we let happen without clarification. We're all watching the movie together. <laughs> Sam and Lauren make a comment about, hey, he's in, he's in a lot of the movies we watch, apparently. <laughs> and then an hour later... <laughs> There's a scene and Laura goes, hey, he's in this too. <laughs> <laughs> and none of us say anything. Okay, whatever. <laughs> he's in the movie and he's just a horrible distraction to the movie. Or just a, a horrible bad guy. To the film. And you're An like, amazing bad guy. What? Oh, so you didn't like There's him in Game of Thrones? Another bad guy. There's Monica... Bellucci, Bellucci, and then there's Jonathan Price. How many bad people are there in this movie? I know. You know I what? hate movies with yeah. <laughs> She likes movies with exactly one villain. <laughs> I it's... hate movies where there's several villains. Like, those X-Men movies? Terrible. I mean, well, yeah. This is the Spider-Man 3 of... <laughs> well, just, so many villains at the fan. No, because there's, like, the terrestrial villains. Mm-hmm. Because the movie starts off with us not really knowing that there are magical things. So the villain is the invading French army that have now mm-hmm. taken over Germany. And they you know, send the Grimms, having caught them and their evil ways. If they go solve the haunting in this town, mm-hmm. then they will perchance, you know, let oh, them go. Oh, I know. I watched the movie. I'm telling the... <laughs> I mean, I would argue that there is that there's one villain, and then there's the sub-villains who are obstacles and aren't, like, the major villains. Yeah, sure, they're obstacles. But so, like, they're the driving, you know, they are the catalyst to the story, so, and the, like, preliminary villain going into then the very evil. Like, you can't start with yeah, Enchanted okay, Eternal Queen. how many queen. levels of villains are there in this movie? Can, oh, and so can you can explain... Who is who in the villain world? Absolutely. Because I'd like to know. I'd you got, like to have a little pie chart. At the very top, magical, eternal, decaying queen in the tower. Okay. Literally in the highest point in the film. Monica both, Bucci. you know, um, in rank and just geographically, she's in the very tall tower. And then you get, like, French, snooty uh, general. And then you get Peter Stormare just being Peter Stormariest of all as, like, the bumbling bad guy who eventually gets won over, and then you got like I panicky he was townspeople. Going to float Monica, away at, at some point, he's <laughs> jumping around the scenes like he was, he was no so bigger other. than any movie he's ever been. He in. was that's yeah, absolutely that, that him. Very true. He's being he, spot on. They had to literally tie him to the set, or he was he just <laughs> floated right off into the sky. The scenery, yeah, no, uh, they, like he literally broke off pieces of the set, <laughs> the very real looking set, and just started <laughs> mop, notching on it. And don't forget, um, Monica Bucci's henchman. That's right. That's right. We had the you know huntsman figure. Yes. They like Jonathan Price. I don't think you mentioned him. Right? He was the evil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I can't tell if we're doing a bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, <right. laughs> I, I didn't hear if you said that. <laughs> I know you said the Monica Bellucci. I wasn't listening. Okay? I know. Okay. <laughs> We're getting used to that. <laughs> Laura's, Through the movie. Laura's still taking notes. During the podcast. <laughs> I'm not. I don't even have my phone on me. You have to believe You're me. You're going to the phone in your mind. I'm not. You're playing Candy I'm Crush trying, in your I don't even play Candy Crush. I don't even know what that is. You know what Candy Crush is. Oh, you don't know what Candy Crush I is. Don't Lauren, know. you want to give her a history <laughs> lesson on okay. Candy Crush? So, in the late 1700s, I'm they gonna invented boiled sweets. I'm going to 15-second synopsis of Candy Crush. Uh, the live game show, not the have, phone you app. You have to push the, the, the candies, right? But then how are they going to make a television game show out of it, Laura? I don't know. <laughs> are they really? Oh, yes. Oh, boy. This is a thing in the world. 
Are they out of seven? Is ABC out of seventies game shows that they can put on the air? Is that We're trying to figure out how to reach the kids, and you know, the kids got love. Why would they make Angry Birds into a live TV game show? That's the one that you make into <laughs> a live made TV into a movie. Show. So, yeah. Yeah. Candy Crush is the one you make into a movie. They want to do yeah. Temple Runner, but they thought that's too much like Legends of the Hidden Temple. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about this movie. Okay. So, uh. Why? <laughs> why? I'm, you can launch so Okay, many. I'll tell you just, exactly just why. why. <laughs> okay, well, can we just, like, jump to the ending and, like, what no, do we even have to do? A, like, a love triangle between, like, the Brothers Grimm and Lena Hetty's character, like, uh, a, um, Angelica's her name because we were all making Angelica jokes from Hamilton throughout. The she movie. had two sisters, guys. Um, no, she had two sisters and Peggy. <laughs> but I mean, what the heck was that about? The love to triangle? cause division between the brothers. There are a sun division, and you know I that mean, nothing ramps it up like a pretty woman who doesn't belong how in eighteen hundred Germany. That? I just wanted to scream. That, you think that's stupid? That's like a classic movie cliche. move. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed, it yeah. is a classic cliche. <laughs> Why was um, Gretel named Greta? Why was I Hansel think, named Hans? To I think to just give the suggestion that these are not the literal stories. Those are diminutive terms of those names. And also I think the idea that it's just sort of, they took these stories and adapted them and made them the stories we know. So like they're not... The, to point out that they're not literally the stories. Why would, the inspirations. Why did they need to do that? For fun. No. And whimsy. So did did the witch need to... Damn cat. Did the witch... Did <laughs> the witch cat has come over yes. to our studios. <laughs> <laughs> did the witch need to, for some reason, use fairy tales to make her magic happen? Well, that's just she exists in the fairy tale world. That's just what happens in fairy tales. It, I mean, it's, you know... Is she come alive this, from a fairy tale? This is like the Shakespeare in Love inspiration, like where you're trying to show the roots of all their stories. And No, but the roots... It, but the stories already existed. And that's why they recognized Did they? Them. No, they didn't. That's what I thought he was... That The stories he compiled, I thought those were amongst them. I think I the theory is that those weren't... Those particular stories weren't stories yet. I would agree that. With he that. was... Like, yeah, I mean, then why was it Hans and Greta? Because they, they came first, and then, like, they wrote... Then Jacob and Wilhelm wrote the story. This Hans and Greta thing is so... This is like, really not apart. one of the things that... <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I think that's but, what they're saying. That but, the, the, okay. the movie reality happened first, and then, like, based on that tale, they wrote down a version of it, but changing the names to protect How the innocent children. did they know about that version of it? Because... We the, nobody was there when they were dropping the breadcrumbs. Greta's and, alive at well, the end. Oh, yeah, they all come back. Yeah, Hans true. was there the whole time. They're chummy with the townspeople. They're going to hang out for a while. Yeah. Have so many exactly. threesomes with Lena Headey. Yeah. Where did they get Cinderella just from? When this tomboy all of a sudden gets glass slippers? Well, they all had glass slippers. Not just how, the tomboy. How did they get Cinderella from that? Though? Well, you know how that works. And is is that a Brothers Grimm story? Saving. It is. It, the version of it okay. is the Brothers. It's yeah. They were the, saving the, it for the sequel. Your glass slippers come from the classic parole version, so that might be how they get away with that. That's okay. actually another which is actually a mistranslation uh, from <laughs> first slippers. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> wait, were you reading IMDb trivia? No, I just this is a fact that I knew. It's a fun fact. First slippers. Why are those fancy? They're, they make a lot more sense comfort wise. It depends true. on the kind of fur. Good point. Yeah. Damn it. He's always right. <laughs> but you don't want to dance in fur slippers. It's like dancing in Uggs. Like, you don't want to do anything in Uggs beyond just sit in a cold room. This I is would. Fascinating. <laughs> I just I would, like this movie so much better would, by listening to this. I would discussion. just <laughs> like it so much better. <laughs> I, I said, movie. I just Laura's, like it. Laura's honing her dislike skills. <laughs> <laughs> She's leveling up her dislike by listening to this ugly conversation. I would rather wear fur slippers for dancing than glass slippers. Fair 100%. enough. Oh, they're so sweat. Both would get very sweaty. That's yes. fair. What if they're enchanted glass least... and they can't break? Still on Well, if you enchant them, of course. Considering I can't wear what a pair of heels longer than 20 minutes. What glass slippers? Oh, it sounds just miserable. With this is Dr. Scholl's insert. Wait, okay, I'm back on. Is it a fur <laughs> Dr. Scholl's insert? Yeah, yes. I'm Jellin. <laughs> <laughs> like Magellan. This is IDEOBM uh, discusses the fairy tales. <laughs> I'm sorry, Laura. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> I mean, like I want to talk about this movie and why you think it's good because I saw this one time and I remember thinking eh, it's okay, but then I when I rewatched it tonight, I'm like, this is horrible. This movie is so stupid. 
All right. Number one. <laughs> so not bad. surprised Laura doesn't like it. And loyal <laughs> listeners, take everything she says with a grain of salt. You know that. You know that. No, you, you know guys that. know me. And you guys know my movies are good. Wink, wink. <laughs> Wait. She just said to the I'm winking. I'm really. Was she just admitting to the audience? No. Are you, uh, I'm winking in a good way. Are you okay? trying to wink in like a confirming way? No. Like, oh, sober. <laughs> this has been a patented Laura wink. Guys, That's my nobody part. knows I'm what joking. it means. <laughs> okay. She's trying to do that like Lucy wink. I'm, I'm Lucy getting like, tired. Hey, so Mr. I start getting really like. Oh, <laughs> well, I mentioned the Greta Gretel thing. Uh huh. I know you were Which like, why are you on that? Because I'm doing it in the order of my problems. <laughs> and my next one is, um, so, okay, so this town... Uh, Marbaden, yes. Okay, so so they come to this town, and my note says salvation at hand. Um, they're like, oh yeah, we're here to save the day, and there's this big swelling of music, and then practically a record scratch. Yeah. And then the, but we need a guide. That was not a... A stopping the swelling music moment. I, that was just a, such a weird choice. Yeah, it's to like it, almost it was, all of the jokes were not funny, right? Yeah. <laughs> what? All of the jokes were funny. We were all four in the same room, and none of us laughed once. They're like, I mean, if you've seen the movie before, like you know what jokes are coming. So you like just that's you true. do that the that's small true. little like gilly check that like ah, that scene. I forgot that's there fun. was one moment where I laughed, but then I looked around and I don't know if it was meant to be a funny moment. I and was I internalizing. Should've, I should have written it down. I but what I, it was. I don't curious. remember. Let's we'll watch it again and find out. <laughs> I did yeah. chuckle at a moment. I don't remember what it was either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you guys are admitting it at least. Yeah. There's the lucid moments. moment that I think, I everyone mean, laughed at. And it's not supposed to be a blatant comedy. It's Terry Gilliam. Right. And that's part of why I love the movie. The record scratch is very broad, though. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I feel like the payoff should have been better. Like, it felt like it was a great Terry Gilliam moment of, like, music swell, inspirational, change of pace. But, like, just to say that. There are it moments have been you're more fun. clearly supposed to guffaw at, though. <laughs> Like, the guy getting launched out of a catapult and hitting the side of a tower and sliding down the tower like a cartoon character, <laughs> only to find out that it's a dummy. Now, to be <laughs> fair, I don't believe that Terry Gilliam expects anyone else to find what he does funny. I think he entirely does things to serve his own passions, and I respect that, and for that reason, Terry, I'm on board. Terry Gilliam sufficiently made me uncomfortable through this whole movie. And normally I would like, like, I was thinking about the Grinch and I'm like, <laughs> how uncomfortable Ron Howard made me feel mm-hmm. during the Grinch. And I'm like, this was not Ron Howard's intention. I, he's just made, like cluttering this movie. And this movie, I'm like, fuck you, Terry Gilliam. Because <laughs> it's intense. this is what you want me to do. This is what he wants to do. Like, yeah. P- Peter Stormare is too, too much for, for the way you're directing this movie and you know it. And I'm like, just wanting to crawl out of the room. See, in his, I actually like it with him, and I've complained about this about, like, Sam Raimi. I think Sam Raimi is guilty of the same, like, loving grotesquery, but I buy it so much more with Terry Gilliam. Like, he goes, like, his stakes are so high when he does it that it's great. Whereas, I'm not even like, talking about that. I'm talking about, like, shooting everyone from solo, looking up, okay. tilting the camera a lot, <laughs> just kind of uncomfortably editing and mm-hmm. shifting things to where everything feels cluttered and, and crowded and, and like... It just creates this mood where you just don't feel comfortable <laughs> and you can't anchor yourself to anything. There, that's funny you should mention Sam Raimi because there were a few moments in the film where, and I know you, your issue with Sam Raimi, mm-hmm. where there were shots that really did look Raimi esque. Yeah, it has a sort of feel of that too. And I was surprised that you liked the movie. No, it feels this. more earned to me than with Sam Raimi. I feel like he's all You over mean the place this ancient, me. evil Necronomicon book creature is not high enough stakes? For you, I'm talking about Evil Dead. No, but just that's no, really no, high that's stakes. high stakes. That's high stakes. But just the like, he and the weird. <laughs> I think I think in those the those weird moments are super earned. I, know I feel the, I feel like his tone shifts a lot for for Sam Raimi, whereas I feel like Terry Gilliam is always just absurd, okay. and that's all. That's my only point there. We'll have to discuss just this at a later oh, date. Oh, but. we'll fight about it. <laughs> I think every Sam Raimi movie I've ever seen is better than this, with the exception Whoa. of maybe Spider Man Three. Damn, that's <laughs> what movie? Wow, Dave Sam Raimi. <laughs> I am sorry, I can't comment on this. No, that's fair. Um, a lot of Evil Dead movies, uh, a few Spider Man movies, Drag but me the hell. not pleasant oh, ones. The first Drag Me to Hell, which is the Tobey Maguire ones. Uh, I saw those. Ones. The the best and the worst Spider Man. Exactly. <laughs> 
all in the one film. <laughs> Up until Homecoming, which is going to be the best. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Well, well guys, let's not put too much pressure on it. <laughs> Why, when they are going to take care of this missing children thing, mm-hmm. do they still bring their fake instruments and start doing their their fake stuff? Because they have a reputation to uphold. Anyone who's heard about the Brothers Grimm, and that's the way they're going to be accepted into the town. If they just show up represented by these French henchmen who are the enemy, they they're going to be kicked to do. out of town. But do they volunteer to do this, or do they get threatened into doing it? Okay. Oh, all right. You are writing your email this is, this at this is, time. Yeah, this is why you did not see Jonathan about. Price. <laughs> no, they got threatened in it. I was watching it. They were threatened into it. You guys were saying when they came, and I'm just... When they were to the audience that right. they were oh, threatened I into. I, I see what she was doing. Finally, you were doing the asking questions by way of um, right. explaining. Is that what, what happened? No, it wasn't, was it? <laughs> gotcha. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just to let you guys know, they were threatened into. It. And so gotcha. they have to present themselves like in this way for the town to accept them because their fame has preceded them. Whereas if they're representing, you know, the French forces or the enemy still. The fame has not preceded them in the town. The one, one, little one girl child. Has well, that was a surprise. They weren't expecting that. Yeah. But now, like, to be able to move through the town with they, authority. They don't have the internet in and this accept, town. Exactly. Yeah. We're behind the time. This movie's got... I can't wait. <laughs> problems with the tones in it. Like, it doesn't It doesn't know what it wants to be. Oh, it, we were okay. talking about being a comedy, and it's definitely not a comedy. Well, but it's absolutely a Terry Gilliam joint. <laughs> and, like, I think th- tying into the fairy tales, like, is perfect for him because they're but, all heightened and weird and, like, kind of entertaining and kind of dark. And I feel like that's absolutely who he is. And that's why I think it's fun. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it's all over the place. I agree that it's all over the place. I don't know that, not that the tone it has, is weird, though. It has to be, like, one tone. But I feel like it doesn't know where it's going in a lot of scenes. I think that it likes to be a mix of those things. Like, I think that he's trying to create the atmosphere of discomfort and uneasiness and, like, strange magical reality. But then he also just loves comedy and, you know, character stories. And so he throws that in as well. And, like, I like neat visuals so I'm going to throw that in, too. And I like, you know, weird moments. Like, I think it's absolutely his vision. Even though the movie was plagued by studio problems and, you know, problems with editors and kind of got away from him. You can still feel like that's absolutely just his ethos in it. Hmm. I agree with both of you. <laughs> <laughs> it's that kind of a movie. <laughs> Why were the Brothers Grimm dressed as scullery maids? Because they're still like prisoners of the French and they're, you know, being jerks to them. And Cinderella was one of their stories at this point that apparently they had collected. And so they're like, you know, clean the floor. You can't eat dinner with us. You go and you you dress up like scholarly maids and you scrub because you are Cinderella's. Ha 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 ha. We are uh-huh. evil laughs. <laughs> like that. Okay. Hold on. I'm going to answer each of these questions so well that you guys are going to just back off. You're like, damn it. You're right. It's pretty good. Why did the wolf look like stop motion animation when it was clearly CGI? Was that an intentional when thing? When was that? Like when he was transforming? Not when he was moving around. And I I don't mind stop motion. I like stop motion. No, even when he was just moving around. But also... We do acknowledge that the CG in this movie was pretty early stages. It looked bad. (laughs) I I was actually surprised to find out it was only 2005. It felt like it was a... a, Even early... even old-fashioned and not just the CGI, just how... How... Set like the sets feel, yeah, uh-huh. and oh, I don't know that that's not stages. that's not yeah. necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, it's I like just it. Like, yeah. oh, this is old. This is like Princess, Princess Bride. Bride. But yeah, yeah. yeah. but then it lends itself. I do like that sort of feel of like the complicity of like it's not so real, but we're putting on a story and we're creating a world that isn't really realistic anyway because it has magic in it, and it also looks like Disneyland but dirty. There's a moment when when you see the brothers Grimm do their first like. Or the only time you see them do the fake thing, yeah. and the witch shows up, uh-huh. and I'm like, "Oh, cool! Like this is <laughs> this is right before CGI became, or it's like right when CGI became a, a standard in every yeah. film, and they're going to do practical effects." And I was so wrong, right. but <laughs> <laughs> for that uh, brief moment, I'm like, yeah. "Oh, cool!" Yeah. It would have been nice. I do absolutely agree that it's practical effects are almost always better. And I feel like, especially when you're on a soundstage, and there is that certain level of theater, mm-hmm. that to do CGI is just a mistake. 
Mm-hmm. I agree. They, yeah. But sparingly. And yeah, to, to, to get rid of your wires or whatever mm-hmm. things you need to do. Like, that's fine. But to have it be so omnipresent mm-hmm. in this film. And somehow I kind of like, there were a couple of moments in the movie that looked sort of like old green screen. Not green mm-hmm. screen. Is it just green screen? Like in Star Wars, the way it was shot in the 70s with like spaceships on stuff. What does he call that? Like the Rancor and stuff. That would be stop motion and and screen screen, yeah. Green screen, okay. There were a couple of moments that looked a little bit like purposely not realistic green screen, like a little not clean, not just because CGI is in its infancy, but just like for the theatrical element of it. Like at the very end when the brothers are flying around trying not to stab each other through the magic, like it's clearly fake, but like Mm -hmm. almost intentionally, like that kind of complicity of like, of course it's fake, but we're having fun because it's just... Oh, so weird. Yeah. Like, there were a few moments of that that I was on board for. And then there's so many moments of Greta chasing a CGI cloth through yeah, the woods. Yeah, that oh, was yeah. painful. That, it reminded me of The Mummy, the 1999 movie, six years older the than The amazing this. 1999 fun. Mummy. It's, it's a good movie, but the spe- that's what the special effects look yeah. like. And it, like I said, it's six later, years it? older than this. It's like, oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's understandable. I mean, we had already learned the lessons of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. It's yeah. always amazing... The different places, technology. Whoa. Yeah. That was like well, 2001, right? We were three Harry Potter movies in by this time. <laughs> and yeah. Oh, uh, so the effects the were movies actually good. Better. But it's always kind of interesting to look at different studios and where they are. And like movies like this were like, whoa, technology was so much farther than where you are right now. And just to realize how much a difference money and design houses make. We had done all of the Lord of the Rings movies by this point. Did they start in 2001? Yeah, I guess you're right. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, we can all That's agree really that this is point. a better movie Wedda than should have got I hate you so <laughs> much. <laughs> <laughs> I will fight you. <laughs> That's... <laughs> uh, That's two things you're going to fight me if on. If only they had Wedda money, this would have been amazing. Uh, those are... Oh, God. This movie is what? Around the same time as Chronicles of Narnia? <laughs> As he was running around at the same time, Wait. this bullshit can was you, happening. Can you say say, say that the again? Chronic what? Coles of Narnia. <laughs> That's right. Did you say the chronic what? Coles of Narnia. Yeah. We love that chronic Coles. what? Coles of Narnia. Was it Coles or Old? It doesn't anyway. matter. Anyway. Um, wow. That's what you'll nitpick, Sam. <laughs> Let's go back to the Greta thing, Sam. <laughs> 2005 Listen, was Narnia. So you guys are a big picture thing. Tearing the movie apart, big picture. I'm I was the Mr. Pig like plus the Red Vines, not Dr. Pepper plus Red Vines. Equals years. crazy delicious. <laughs> um... I'm going to have nightmares about Sasha losing his face to that mud ginger yeah, red nose. Yeah, you should. That part was Ooh, terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. I and, agree. But it, it actually, the him having a face looked good. Then the mud creature came, and that looked like crap. The mud creature the that's mud creature made of so gingerbread. gingerbread. Yeah, uh, uh, that was weird. It that's was fun. dough. It was mud dough. And then it dried into... Honest question. Why yeah. because. do that uh, with mud? That's a dumb yeah. thing to do. Right? Yeah. Because last time I checked, mud is not gingerbread. Put that in a bakery. I think it was just, just do that in a bakery. I think that is, the, the, the mud creature was just being funny. Is that Terry, I think the mud creature has a really good sense of humor. I think it's Terry Gill- Gilliam's um, hard condemnation of gingerbread. I think, he does not like it. I think the mud creature is like <laughs> Disney's genie, where it exists outside of time, so it can reference things that aren't necessarily current to it and it has no business knowing. So, like, it was hardening to, like, trap the girl inside, and then, like, I'm going to make a reference to, like, a story I should not have read. Ha! I'm funny. Just like the genie. <laughs> right? Okay. We can all agree with this. This is a hard, fast theory. I don't think so. Because ultimately, that, that thing's power comes from like, the, the witch is yeah. doing, and she didn't feel outside of time. Didn't she? No. Okay, I can't argue with that. <laughs> I'm going to go with no. She existed in time far before. She was sort of trapped a hundred years ago, like just in her knowledge base. She would have no business knowing about the gingerbreads, except that now her like magic brain expands beyond. I don't know. I'm don't trying. Know. I'm trying. We don't know. Okay. <laughs> I'll give you that one. We'll fight. But that's all right. I Not don't even know what's going on anymore. <laughs> Laura's so stoned right now. <laughs> no. Should, that's why she can't remember Jonathan Price. <laughs> <guys. laughs> I'm gonna go back to Jonathan Price. Okay. I'm I'm not, I'm not stoned. I'm totally. I'm she just totally very had tired. a huge sandwich before the show. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> Laura is staring at her hands right now. It's... <laughs> sandwich was strong. 
<laughs> I, I think putting the pot in the bread is a mistake. <laughs> like, I hear baked well, it's goods. Togo's fault, okay? <laughs> yeah. um, when Jonathan Price's character died, he says... Spoilers. Guys, if you have any questions, please. <laughs> right, now, I, I don't want to jump in because nobody's saying anything. No, I'm, I'm just waiting to the to we get to the end and talk about the two additional people in their team, the Brothers Grimm team, who, you know, you see their heads at the end, mm-hmm. they hold up the heads, yeah. and you're like, whoa. Wait, who held up their heads at the end? Did I miss them? The French people. Did they decapitate them? Yes. They decapitate. That's what the French like to do. When was this? Before the fire? It was it's like right okay. before the fire. They wanted to add a add more stakes. To I gotta and say, it's like the bullshit. What the hell is this? That's where I'm like. I mean, like that is weird because they all they feel like such French. unnecessary characters. But then that movie just builds stakes on them. Like there are several times where they're in peril, and yet they survive. And and the brothers Grimm seem to really care about these two characters, and so you, you they keep having these moments. And then but at the end, it's like these French officers just hold up their decapitated heads and they're like, okay, we're done with them. We're not even going to have, you know, the Brothers Grimm try and save them or whatever. We're not even going to put any effort into it. We're just going to write them off that way. They were dastardly. They were lackeys as well. I don't know if they really cared about them. They ran away from them. They were sort of like work friends. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I don't know. It just felt like a weird thing. They were family and they turned their back on family. You don't turn your back on family. (laughs) No. (laughs) It was just weird because it was like, I didn't necessarily, like, I don't think the movie earned the respect for those characters. Like, I didn't really care about them. Like, I just felt like, oh yeah, they're just kind of there. I think the it was just to raise there. the state. I mean, yeah, they were so But, many, I mean, I but like in was... the end when you're like, okay, well, that's kind of strange. Like, you keep having them in these scenes and then you're just gonna... Have... I think it was just, I mean, to finally bring up the level of peril that's, you know, now we mean business in the French are starting to murder and we can't well, kill we, them. I mean, we're gonna kill them. Yeah, <laughs> and now it's like, oh damn! That was a surprise. I would have never thought they were even capable. The French, of that yeah, of, we know, we know that they're, they're, so they're capable of murder. They were saying the whole time they were capable of it, and they were all talk though. You know kitten. those frogs? Oh, that's just Terry Gilliam <laughs> and his hatred of cats. <laughs> I, mean, like, I still can't get past it. It's like it's such an unproductive thing to bring up. It's the like, brothers the Grimm girl. getting, you know, threatened into into. Solving the mystery of this town is stupid and contrived. <laughs> like, I don't know. That happened in the movie. And I'm like, this is dumb. This is dumb. I can't follow the movie. Oh, this is the movie. Okay. All right. Be- because um, the French knew that they were shysters, right? Yeah. That yeah. they were charlatans. Yeah. So why get the charlatans it's to... Because they had... Because they That's were... like saying... <laughs> Here, um, <laughs> no, it's like it's like getting an it's like getting Harry Houdini into a séance room and like picking out where the fakery is. It's because they are charlatans and someone is committing these murders that seem to have these mystical elements. Mm-hmm. And so, like, we can't figure out who it is. We're gonna send these guys in, some Germans who will have an easier time than we do, and they will because they're experts be able to figure out how they're doing this magic, and they'll figure out who the murderer is. Okay. So the French did believe that it was not mystical. Yeah, they didn't know it was mystical. It was just like, they've reported these magical elements about, like, crazy, like, magic flying wolves and stuff. And, like, that's fake, of course. So, like, it starts with the premise of, of course, magic does not exist in this world. I want to talk about Jonathan Price's death. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, okay. Before before he died. Not his prettiness. He says, all I wanted... Okay, I'm not sure what he said. All I wanted was to bring a little order. So it was order. Maybe have some quiche. A, a slice of quiche would be nice. Because yes. I honestly was not sure if he said some order. A little order or a little hors d'oeuvres. A I slice think he of said hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> That's what I was wondering, too. I think it was hors d'oeuvres. Either way, it's a stupid line. <laughs> uh-huh. can... Well, I mean, no what his here. stupid Stupid accent. I didn't want to do some hors It's a great accent. It's a great type like, of the Pew accent. Like... Oh my gosh, I sound like a... a, a I can't believe I'm saying Jonathan Price makes a more Amazing. convincing Argentinian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. He, but he wasn't trying to be authentically French. No, he like, done I that. had no problem with he the big... He was being a caricature. caricature of a French yes, caricature. Yeah, he was definitely... A clumsy, glizzo-ass caricature. But that wasn't what he was trying to do. He was trying to... Inf- um, well, I mean, I guess keep, there was some order, it's like order. keep. If you look at the ger- Germans, it's just barbarians but wasn't what and all he was trying to do. He was trying to keep the um, the French heel on the, the masses. This is the order. Yeah, the orders. 
and, and like, like the interpretation. A little quiche. <laughs> All I want is some orders. Little, like little, tapas little, is the best. No, little miniature quiches. That's <laughs> why he said the quiche line after that. And I want to do some orders. But well, they are delicious. He's, okay, he's, he's, he's laying out his, his true plans. He did his really his enjoy food. Condition. They really did like present him as like an Epicurean in classic French style. Food was a lot of his deal. Mm-hmm. I guess. You can stop it. You know the story. What story? What was the story that he knew? That was the line at the end, too. Like, uh, Wilhelm tells Jacob, you can stop it. You know the story. I thought all these stories were, you know, were, Not were new any. to them. Well, what is the story that he no, knows, I mean, Lauren? They've been collecting stories as they go around, and that's sort of how they can create these fake, you know, I keep wanting to say hauntings, but, you know, bewitchings or whatever. Right. These mystical moments because they go around and they catch the folklore of what people are afraid of. And then they build scenarios that prey on that. So he's aware of that. And so he's sort of aware of this old story in Marbodden of, like, the queen in the forest that would kill all of her subjects and was, like, bloodthirsty and horrible and, like, enchanted herself and lived in tower. So he could mean just, like, you've heard this story. Or it could just be, like, going back to, like, Jung's classic, like archetypes of like every story has this in common so you absolutely know what the ending is here it's very not, Jungian they did not save the cat there was no save the cat moment <laughs> he would never save the cat Terry <laughs> Gilliam the but, best you get is saving all the children but he didn't know I mean he they eventually figured out what to do but it was not intuitive it was not from any stories it was <sighs> he, he's just trying to give him confidence you know that thing okay, like, so what's you the love triangle grow. how how do you explain the love triangle where the story is that from Life. Well, that's a sale story. story as old as time. Life, my friend. <laughs> what fairy tale is that from? <laughs> and it's not... It, but isn't that nice that it's like a drive and a competition? I mean, that's, you know, just competition. And that's what keeps, you know... You have the connection of blood, but then, like, what keeps you at odds with each other and what keeps you in, like, constant conflict. And that's another level of conflict. And I really, like, bought the chemistry between either of them. Well, I like that it doesn't pay off. I definitely like that no one ends up with the girl. Like, she's nice and she likes them because they're cool, but, like, there's no ever clear sign of, like, she's going to end up with that one. No, I think she's going to end up with both of them and they're going to have a... um, That's They're going to be brother wives, brother husbands. (laughs) (laughs) That's terrifying. (laughs) But that's what's going to happen, right? I would have been, like, if they, if that ending, if the ending had come to that with both of them just kind of walking off arm in arm with her, that would have been amazing. <laughs> it would have been earned. Honestly, yes. And I, I feel like that's not, that could have happened in this movie, but there was a choice made not to do that. I like that it doesn't. I like that that's not her path in the attempt of like that's her true. being a cool yeah. female character. Like she's wanted family back. She went through like trauma. I don't really know. think she's that cool of a character though. She doesn't save herself. I mean, we'll get into gender politics after <laughs> this. I don't I think so. that you have to always save yourself to be a strong female character. We have this fight in Die Hard. <laughs> I don't think their scenarios were just you're an in peril person. Remember, Sometimes, Laura, remember you in need to any save of the movies we watched. All where of us. Name one, a single movie in all of the bad movies we watched where the person in peril at the end has been a guy. I'm not saying that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Because this why can she save them? A 12, I'm, 12 she did lots girls of in times. Peril and and our only female character who talks the, is, I'm, is one of them. I'm not arguing that there is a preponderance of female <laughs> damsels the, 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 and that that's a problem. At that point, though, the problem is with. Hollywood in general, or so- our society in general, you cannot blame every movie. Yeah. Because they're... they're sure you can. <laughs> of course you can. You can't blame... No, you can't... Yes. Blame, no, you can't blame each movie. You can't blame each individual movie for like, well, Why can't this you? movie... This sure movie. you can. Why well, can't you? Lauren you, I guess you that can Terry Gill- Gilliam Where do you start? is you going and taking his his whole directing over this and he's taking control over this and adding his dislike of cats and shit. So <laughs> it, why can't he just turn over the studios and go like, F you, I'm going to have the female save the guy, the brothers. Still needs them to okay, let, let's see. you've got a movie that's based <laughs> oh, on... I... And they're still the Grimm brothers. They're still the title character. Right, let, let's say... So what if, <laughs> but what if, okay, what if one of them, what if she just saved one of them, you know? She and, did, lots and, of times. But no, at the end. I mean, like, Yeah, like when they the, were on fire, the tied well, to the ladder. There's so many other ladder. structural problems with this movie <laughs> that can't possibly lead up to what Laura is proposing, which I agree, that would be more interesting. But there's so many other dumb choices throughout this movie where it's just like, Right. <laughs> I mean, uh, but then I guess you could have thrown anything at the wall at the end. You could have had, like, 
fucking like a cat come in and save the brother Jim, and it would have felt in <laughs> two That's a parole. A that wouldn't have fit. <laughs> <laughs> you could have had like a rainbow shoot out of the sky and rocket them all to safety, and it Wait, would have felt what? like it fit into the movie. Like just that anything. Like just, just things just kept random. Something as bright and colorful as a rainbow would not have fit no. into this movie. <laughs> the color grading at the end it was horrible. Was like no During distractingly the red. Moon. I'm like, well, this is insane. That this... was a really weird, like, just red gel over the lighting. It just looked like he took a piece of red cellophane and taped it over the lens and went, cool. Probably. Probably not. Maybe not over that, but over the lights. Probably did. <laughs> and again, that one fits into, like, the theatricality and the unreality of it, but it was kind of distracting. Yeah. In that moment. I did not feel Peter Stormare's change at the end was at all earned. But he experienced a genuine magical moment. He tortured he, people for fun. Well, you cannot come back from that. This wasn't like like he's, he's not a good person. He just like had a, the movie. This is like a brighter moment. A person. <laughs> At the end, he's a he's one of the good guys. Yeah, he like did a good thing. But you know, life is a series of like good moments and bad moments. And so, like in the single moment, he did something good. But like he's gonna go back to this movie is so clowny <laughs> that I'm like, yeah, he's he's. Um, on rails to have his moment at the end where it's like that moment in Pirates of the Caribbean where like the where like the two British soldiers we follow are like just randomly pirates at the end because we can't see them killed like it was just like one of those things where we're like yeah <laughs> we no, have a relationship no. now <laughs> yeah. he did have a near death experience also I hear that changes people <laughs> and it, it, it's I could see him having a redemptive journey and then dying getting killed but for him to survive it's it it's too serious for that character man <laughs> <laughs> that may be true <laughs> But it, this wasn't just some guy who was following orders and realized the error of his ways. He was torturing people for fun. He enjoyed those torture things. The the thing, the big spinning blade that ended up killing the cat. <laughs> he had an orgasm when that cat died. That's fair. That was... That's a good point. Well, he still has, like... <laughs> it all comes down to this cat. <laughs> <laughs> If every movie showed the stakes of a situation by having a cat get killed by whatever was putting people in peril, like that would be something. It's it nice would be flip something. Side of things. This supposed to always saving the dog, just always kill the cat. Every it's movie like, is a horror movie. Mission, like Mission Impossible, having a cat hit the ground first, <laughs> the alarms go off, and then having like <laughs> Tom Cruise very carefully go down. So yeah. Just to make clear to the audience. That's our benchmark. What else would we got to say about this movie? <laughs> I, I don't... I don't know. <laughs> do you guys want to discuss... Do uh, Bobby and Laura discuss gender politics in the movie we just watched? I think we did. I mean, I want to hear the theme song, though. I got the eye of the tiger. Susan B. Anthony was on the dollar coin for a week. Stop objectifying me. Gloria. Diamond. Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Equal rights amendment was never ratified. Rosie the Riveter. Oh my god, Bobby, shut up. Rosie the Robot. Who's gonna make me my sandwich? My body, my choice. Blatant. Blatant. Susan B. Anthony was taken off the dollar for a reason. Beyonce. Well then, she, sh- she shouldn't have said I think we did right when it got to the end. I have a lot to <laughs> say. <Take it. laughs> Go, Bobby. You're the only one to hear the theme song. Go, Go Bobby. Um, Go, Bobby. No, I actually don't have anything to say. I honestly forgot that Lena, like, <laughs> for a character, and I don't know if this is gender related, for a character who's a pretty big part of the movie, as when we brought her up, I'm like, oh yeah, that was a character in this movie. <laughs> It's just the character, aside from Peter Stormare and I guess Jonathan Price, like no one makes a, no one makes an impression of this movie. Every, I like, I don't know. I'm just rambling. It's so late. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't strictly necessary except as a love interest. I mean, uh, yeah. And someone to be competent. I they, think that helped. Someone to like come in and they do things well. F- figured that out. I, I, think, yeah. I agree. Because I mean, That's she fair. didn't really. She told. Oh, oh, and to tell them the story, move along the plot. Mm-hmm. But her dad told her. The, yeah. So Here's we a, had to know the story of the the tower. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, Otherwise, this movie, this movie we would understand why there was a tower in the middle of the woods. <laughs> this movie could have certainly done with one fewer female character. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I, that's all I'm saying, guys. God, this movie had a lot of um, going back and forth between two locations. Like, 
Let's go to the tower. Let's go back to the town and regroup. Let's go back to the tower again. Let's go back to the town and regroup. <laughs> I mean, they had those sets. You want to use them. <laughs> well, also, I mean, okay, I guess we don't talk about gender politics, but... We can keep... We can make this whole thing about gender politics. What? I don't think men were portrayed very No, fairly. no. I was going to say his... That her father, like, we find out he's the wolf and he's the one who's been taking all these kids... Um, mm-hmm. Well, they're, they he pulls them out and puts them in the their little tombs, but um, and when she realizes it that it's her father, you're just like I don't really care because I don't know about him, so I don't have any interest in like invested interest in him. Okay, so the deal with the father was was his deal that he had. I guess are we some. Going off of what they're saying, are we supposed to care for him? Like, is he a victim of the witch, or did he willingly throw everything away? It was sort of like he was out in the woods in the winter, and they sort of presented it as if, like, he had gotten lost or somehow was, like, about to, you know, die of hypothermia, and presumably, like, the witch was able to call him to her, bring him to her, and did similar as he did to Wilma Varian when his life is in peril, like, I will save you, but, like, you will... Your, your soul will be mine, essentially. And she, like, stuck the weird pushpin of death into his chest and, like, that controlled him and also imbued him with the magical powers to be able to do her bidding. So he's like a Renfield. Yeah. Okay. It's weird that no one cares that he's dead at the end. Mm-hmm. Especially since one of our main uninteresting characters, like, uses <laughs> him as a landing pad. It and that's nice. how he dies. Because it was certainly a big deal for Lena Headey. She was certainly sad. Like, her father died last winter, and then her s- sisters were the first two to be abducted by the magic thing in the woods. And so, I, I bet she's going to care. Like, uh, and she, especially, so. since, especially since she, she knows, like was, they was, don't show it, but it feels like there must be a moment of like, hey, I just remembered, like, my dad was that weird enchanted wolf, I think. Do you know what happened to him? Like, uh, we don't know that what? Been, that That's would have been weird. great if we had that scene. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> it's just weird that we, we, don't, we don't have, like, a scene of self-sacrifice or anything. <laughs> it's like he dies literally by getting landed on and saving another person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he doesn't get his redemptive turn. <laughs> well, he does. He goes and grabs, like, the last big piece of the mirror that's sort of keeping the queen yeah. from exploding. Like, mm-hmm. He grabs that and jumps out, is, or is going to, like, toss it out the window. And then Wilhelm comes and knocks them both out the window. Um, it lands but, on it. But I think he was going to do something good. And Guys. then... Oh, so sorry. Terrible death. Guys, they left this movie open for a sequel. Yeah, they, they did. did. There's they so many more stories did. to tell. <laughs> they could go on a book tour. Mm-hmm. We could go... They're going to like show how they make the stories all like sex-driven and for grown-ups. Because this is the reality, everybody. I wonder why they didn't do that. Yeah, they could have the cast is doing had that. a scene where a step... Sisters had their eyes plucked out the burn, oh and were gosh. cutting off bits of their feet. It, it was only PG-13, even though we had somebody cut in half and their guts all over the place, <laughs> um, and a few other pretty uncomfortable things. Two B-heads. <laughs> yeah. But no blood, so... I, yeah, exactly. PG-13? Oh. We're weird. The system is weird. The, when I started watching this, I was like, I just want to watch Into the Woods. Well, you should. The I, play, wait, not the, the play. movie. The film. Oh, gosh. Okay, Chris Pine, Agony. That's all I need. No, it's so stupid, though. <laughs> oh, my God, that's the best. But it's just ridiculous. It's no, a great, it's not. It's a great oh musical my. number. It, and it's a good setup for a later musical number. Oh, wait, that's not No, we cut that part because it's a Disney film. And we're yeah. going to oh ruin the whole point of having this musical God. by not having the point where the princes are all jerks. Yeah. I legit don't get the hate for that movie. I think it's great. Really? Yeah. Oh, I really didn't like it. I think like front to back, it's real good. What? I actually don't. I don't. I don't hate it, but Maybe I, I we do should think do the, that. I would happily do. I mean, I'm Solid sourced. Week. I'm sourced in like an intense love for the musicals. My very favorite musical. Yeah, I, and I so love it too. all I see is how this should not have been made a film, and it's adapted poorly. And like nothing against these are all good people in it, and they're trying hard, but I feel like it's poorly done. And Except Meryl Streep, you don't care for her. And lacks diversity. She, and Emily, was, like, she's great. James Corden, and great. Emily Bunt, like, great actors. Chris Pine, very funny, but just, like, direction and interpretation bad. Also, it's a... Yeah, I don't get it. It's a stage show where the story is told through song monologues. That's so boring to watch on screen. 
I, and they do I, it terribly. I, I, I think they do a really good adaptation yeah, of they it. Do too. It's really it would be a really hard I mean, it was kinda of nerve wracking the way that they were they adapted it on into a movie. But I think they did really We've transitioned into indefensive. Yeah. Into because it's very important that I have everyone know mm-hmm. that they cut out the whole stakes and the whole point of the show. That's how did they cut out the whole stakes of the show? Because the whole point is the transformation of how happily ever after is not a lie, but is compromised and is not always pure. And so, like the reprise of agony, where we discover that the princes aren't happy and they like are now lusting after different women, mm-hmm. and just the continual like. I mean, mm-hmm. that happens, just not in song. But right, it doesn't happen with the same level. Like it's, oh, I don't know, it's not as good. And they cut out great songs, and they just move stuff around. They cut out like there, there's one song they cut that's like egregious. They cut out no more. Just yeah, that, so that one, that one's song. the one that hurts a lot. And I think that's like, don't take that away from James Corden, you bastards. <laughs> and also, you I'm cast so... Simon Russell Beale as his dad, and you don't have his dad in the movie. You dumb, dumb people. And it's just, oh. It's a movie about being careful how you tell stories, and it's uh-huh. all white people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like... Yeah. Most of the place. <laughs> okay, enough into the Okay, rooms. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's do IDOBM IMDB trivia, TM. Lauren, what have you got? <laughs> it is not much. There was not... Uh, there was a certain amount of trivia, but uh, I didn't love it all. And there, was, there were vague hintings at what was happening behind the scenes, but nothing concrete enough to really bring to you happily, just like problems between Tara Gilliam and the Weinsteins, the producers, Mm -hmm. and there was one that just made me sad, where they initially wanted Samantha Morton for the Lena Headey role, Mm -hmm. and the studio came back with something like, no, she's got fat upper arms, why would Matt Damon want to F her? And so they were forced to cast Lena Headey. (laughs) If it's true, again, this is... I am DB DB TM, and so it's all just whatever you find on so IMDb, sad. not sourced in anything. It could yeah. be wrong, but I don't know. That feels like a true thing. Let's do because she uh, does kind of have thick upper arms. Bobby and Laura discuss gender people. politics and the ID of right. IMDb trivia we just listened to. Samantha Martin should be in more stuff. She she's so great. I know. She's always good. I agree. And lately, she's think- just in stuff where she looks a mess. Like she's a pretty lady. Don't make her look terrible, guys. Why is she a crazy anti magic lady? I've gone I've gone oh, Fantastic yeah. Beast now. <laughs> See, Let's start talking me. about that movie now. Okay, so It's so good. It's, is it also good? Is it so good? No, it's, it's so a, terrible. It's a oh, okay. I don't know if it's, it's terrible. No, but it's, it's really certainly bad. not great. <laughs> and it's a problem. This will be um, fun. I need to see it again. Yeah, okay, can uh, if we're gonna sidetrack onto that real okay. quick. The worst twist I've ever seen in any movie is like, just kidding, it's not Colin Farrell, it's Johnny Depp. It would have been amazing if it was Colin Farrell. Like, Especially I'm so on board with him being Grindelwald. Of all people. I think I think most intelligent people can say, like, Johnny Depp needs... I'm not saying I'm completely over him, but he needs to prove that he's still worth watching. And he's not That's doing it. It felt like, like, aren't you guys excited? Johnny Depp's in this series. Yeah, like, I am excited uh, 15 years ago. Did you make this movie? 15 oh, cool, years ago, right? Sam would be like, awesome. Oh, it makes me so sad. Hey, realizing that this this movie that you thought was going to be a cool, small, sm- smaller stakes, you know, side story in the Harry Potter universe is going to be a huge story with Johnny Depp as the big bad. Mm-hmm. Fuck you. I don't mind it being a huge story, I, but yeah, I'm just like, I'm over Johnny Depp. But he gets to fight you as well. Why is Johnny Depp's wolf in Into the Woods dressed as a zoot suitor? What's that about? What is that? <laughs> it's kind of... That's not the movie we've made. It's... <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. We've gotten way. <laughs> I forgot Johnny Depp's in that movie. <laughs> well, did you also know that initially Johnny Depp was originally set to star as Will Grimm in this? Which one is Will? He's not Damon character. Me and Damon. We love it. <laughs> but that's funny, especially considering... You could put anyone into either of those two roles. This but... is very true. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny you say that, because that goes into my next one. Matt Damon and Heath Ledger were originally cast in the opposite roles, but they petitioned to switch them. Well, and they switched right. them Isn't mid-filming, and no one knows. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob... Matt Damon with glasses? I don't believe it. Heath it's Ledger looks a lot like Joseph Gordon-Levitt, too. During a lot of it. <laughs> I can I support that. Yeah. That makes sense. He doesn't grow a good beard. No, he really <laughs> did not. Maybe it's a fake beard just to make his character a little still like weirder still and odder. Maybe. That's true. Yeah, right. they, you don't really get much of their characters. You don't know any. They really. each have one trait. Yeah, one of them <laughs> brought then, a magic beans to help the 
to I'm one of them on. it wants to believe in magic and something Correct. greater than himself uh-huh. and Matt Damon is a realist who just believes in living for yourself in or the moment an and asshole? giving what you can from life I'm, like really, to remind his brother I'm describing a Republican I really wanted the magic beans to come back in some way right. that oh, cool. never but does. that's an American story so it couldn't really pay off in the Grimm story it doesn't but exist in then, Germany. Then why would it have existed in the movie at all? Yeah. Well, just because there was a liar oh, okay. who took advantage of a child. That's an American story? Yeah. Interesting. One more. Oh, I got one more. one more. I got one more. Okay. Um, so because of issues with the Writers Guild, Terry Gilliam and Tony Grissoni were not able to credit themselves as writers in the screenplay, even though they made many changes to the original script from Aaron Kruger, very German, which also makes sense mm-hmm. why we're doing this. So they invented a credit for themselves as dress pattern makers. <laughs> and they were quoted as saying, the film was made from a dress pattern, not necessarily a screenplay. That's interesting. It's weird. So but it's weird. I in was a fun wa- way. I agree. I was wondering when they throw this in, and I guess now is as good a time as any. I was trying to remember the name of the um, movie Lost in La Mancha, which turns out to be mm-hmm. Lost in La Mancha. And <laughs> I did it by looking up... Um, uh, Terry Gilliam Don Quixote movie with and Johnny there huh? with Johnny Depp was it him? I don't know. yeah there is a schedule for 2018 um, the death of Don Quixote movie that he is supposedly supposedly working on yeah. so he might Why? what's that? I saw that on Wikipedia yeah. he's so still he, gonna make his movie happen? we'll see that's cool I would love to see as much as I would like to see that I also would like to see um, Lost in La Mancha 2 <laughs> which would be interesting I've never seen it it's it was um, it was good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's like I was looking you know, at it today and like I will watch it. Today. Okay. It's like ninety four percent on Rotten Tomatoes, but I I don't remember it being. I remember it liking it, but it was like I don't think it was. I don't think I enjoyed it as much as I thought I would. But maybe if I went back and watched it, I would. I don't know. Also, it could be kind of culty. Maybe. So let's do verdicts. Uh, Lauren, you still like this movie? I do still like this movie. I know it's not perfect, but I. You know, it feels like any Terry Gallon movie where you're just going on his weird journey into his brain, and I have fun, and I still, I like it. I had trouble with it. I mean, That's I, fair. I didn't hate it, hate it, but in the beginning I was, I don't know how much of it was waiting for the coffee to kick in, but I really <laughs> felt like I was falling asleep. And then toward the end, I'm like, okay, I'm watching this, I'm curious to see what happens, but I wasn't really invested or enjoying it too much. So, I think that's a thumbs down. How about you, Bobby? Um... I know I did it. Um, the yes, I, it did feel very Terry Gilliam, and it made me antsy and uncomfortable. But so I, like, I, I've only seen two. I mean, aside from Monty Python and the Holy Grail, I've seen great movie. Yeah, it's great. Can I've you? seen Fear and Loving, and I've seen Imaginarium of Doctor Parnassus. And oh, yeah, I forgot that was the. Really, and um, it's compelling. Yeah, they're, those movies make you feel uncomfortable too, but they're real interesting and weird. And the thing that was disappointing about this movie is the story beats felt really contrived and out of nowhere, and, and the it was really boring, I thought. And so, I don't know, like it, it was absurd and uncomfortable, but it was also not interesting, and that was kind of the bummer for me. Yeah. How about you, Laura? Yeah, um, I agree with Bobby. Um, I saw it one time, and I remember thinking it was okay. Like, I don't remember hating it. Um, I still don't hate it. I mean, I just didn't like it. Like, I was, I didn't, wasn't interested in it. Like, nothing about the movie grabbed me. Um, it feels like they stuff a lot into the movie, even if it's Terry Gilliam's style or not. I don't necessarily think that's an excuse to just overstuff a movie with weird things in it. Like, I think you have to earn it. And I don't think this movie did a good job of that. Mm. Bobby, did you not see 12 Monkeys? I've not seen 12 Monkeys. Oh, oh wow. Good. I know, I know. Yeah. Um, okay, now is the time on um, our podcast where we do the movie We Wish We'd Seen. Ugh, this movie is crap. I could write a better movie in my sleep. DOBM presents the movie we'd wish we'd seen.
And that is, of course, where we take an aspect of this movie and uh, make a sequel, prequel, side movie, something like that. Uh, uh, let's start with Laura. What would you mm-hmm. like to see? What was the movie you wish you'd seen? Um, I would like to see more of the comedy version of this movie because I think this movie might work better if it were actually a comedy, like a little lighter and take out like all the extra unnecessary stuff and where it's like they kind of just, these two brothers are, go into this city and and whether or not the actual like French, occup- where, whether or not the French were occupying Germany, I feel like. I don't know if it's relevant to the movie because I feel like they're kind of like if they were just going through the town, like you took out all the history behind it and it was just more of like a lighter like version of maybe like it, it, the story, the um, fairy tales. Like I think that might be interesting. How are you, Bobby? Yeah, I was going to say um, the uh, taking the French occupation stuff out um, gets to the point of the movie faster. Yeah. Um, it takes a long time for them to kind of get to the point of the movie, which is, you know, these these characters are are confronted with, you know, an actual witch and they're I don't know, like it it yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that's so yeah, that's the movie I wish I'd seen. Yeah. Um I, I I kind of agree I definitely agree with that. Like just getting to the point quicker. Cutting to the chase, as they say. Uh oh, what was I gonna say? I I'm playing more with not not just the fairy tales themselves. Maybe their knowledge of the fairy tales. Maybe they're uh-huh. they're having. Com- I, I think it would have been more interesting and dynamic if they had compiled these stories and somehow this witch woman was using those pre existing stories to to do what she was doing. But rather than have as Lauren helpfully explained, like, oh no, this is where they get those stories. I'm like, well, that, that's stupid. And wh- why would she have twelve different stories for collecting twelve different girls? Why wouldn't she use the same thing each and every time? But whatever. That's that's a critique with the movie itself, and that's not part of one. How about you, Lauren? <laughs> what movie would you like to have seen? Well, you see, because it, they weren't all necessarily stories that were based on the. There's just a couple <laughs> that happened. No, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, that's a good question. I want to see the sequel when they go on the book tour and they're super <laughs> famous, and then like a oh, copycat we- killer comes out and like, no, I'm not really sure. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll, we could get to know them as individuals rather than just I want to like see stock characters again. I want to see the one where they write the really porny adult original versions of these stories that they actually who were initially historically. That would be fun exploring that. Ooh, that would be interesting, right? You Somehow know, come I want to see, I like see the, a movie. Of, oh, sorry. No, just like the next one's a sex comedy. Uh, you, you had one? You had something? Yeah, I mean, I was just going to make a stupid comment about, oh, yeah, it would be funny if it, the next movie was just about, you know, the, the two of them dating Lena Headey. <laughs> and it's a weird sex comedy. What if it turns into, like, a weird sitcom of, like, them all living together and it's hard because, like, Wilhelm is so clean and it's fastidious and everyone else is messy and they're just like, well, they can't because he butchers them and I don't Um, want them to do that nonsense CGI with him that would be wrong Uh, (laughs) just use use footage of him from the dark night Bobby so they clearly did set this up for a sequel Uh, or as a possible they left it up for a sequel Um, and I thought it was I thought I thought it was well. They they show the the her eye in the in the mirror fly away, yes. and I thought it was kind of interesting that she's clearly the evil queen from Snow White, and yet the most important character in Snow White was missing from this. Snow, Snow Prince. Prince. Yes, yes, exactly the prince. No Snow White. So that might actually might have been um, where a sequel could go with somehow. Yes, it's sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> where were all the dwarves? Oh, yes. <laughs> Not one um, dwarf in that town. Nope. <laughs> Bobby! <laughs> Dwarves are real, Laura. They're real people. <laughs> They're called little they people. <laughs> but dwarfism is a type person. of little person. Yes, I know. A dwarf isn't the same as midges. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can say it. In Trump's America, you can say it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do things that need no defense. That is just whatever we're into right now. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I can start. Um, I 
um, watched the the BBC miniseries for Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, and I thought it was okay, but it, it felt like like it went really fast, and so I was curious about the book. And I read the book, and the book from page one is fantastic. The voice of the narrator is delightful. And I know it, is, it would be kind of impossible to adapt that to the miniseries, but uh, it is so much the worst because they can't just have that voice. She's like clever and witty, and she's got uh, the, the you know, that British, I don't, I don't even want to say dry British wit, but just the British wit, and uh, it, is, it is wonderful. Um... Was I going to say? Oh, also in the miniseries, there, in reading the book, uh, there were a lot of holes in the miniseries. That just like, why did this happen? Um, I have no idea. You know, it's just like these these gaping plot holes that the book um, does address, and um, a, a, somebody a better screenwriter would have adapted it better for the screen. And unfortunately, that didn't happen. But whatever. Um, yeah. So. Uh, the, Susanna Clark is the author, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. It is a wonderful book. I've um, heard good things. Yes. Just now, from me. Yes. I think Leah likes it, too. Yeah, mm-hmm. she does. Um, Bobby, how about you? I was on a plane yesterday, and I watched the You're first... You're kind of flying. <laughs> Guys, Allegiant Airlines is so not, <laughs> not good. It's terrible. <laughs> um... I'm late to the party on this, but I watched the first episode of Steven Universe, and it is oh, amazing, and I've I really love that show. spent all morning watching Steven Universe, and I can't get enough of it, and it's Ooh. wonderful, and... Where are you watching it? I love it all. Huh? What, what platform are you watching it? I bought the first season on iTunes, because it was $5. That uh, doesn't help me. <laughs> That's not so bad, actually. Um, Darn it. I've heard from people I should It's watch. Yeah, it's 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 great. I love it. Um, the theme song is is addicting and sing it. Great. Nope, not gonna sing it. Um, how about in two weeks for themes like old times? Do you want to guest sing <gasps> a theme song? song? Uh, yeah, I could do that. It's so good. I, I to, love it that much. You'll have to do it in six weeks because in two weeks, Lauren's <laughs> got part th- part three yeah. of her Disney afternoon. Sorry, yeah, so. no, it's you fine. Have to wait. It's good. We could cut you in. I think that'd be fair. <laughs> no, no, special no. guest. It'll give me that <laughs> lot longer prepare. Cool. How about you, Laura? Um, I, there are two things that I'm into right now. I've been listening to, well, listen to it before, but the last five years, I just saw it, um, the play version of it. Um, and so now I've been listening to the soundtrack again. So much better than the movie. Sorry. Oh, fuck <laughs> no, off. Okay. This is not your time. <laughs> we earned our explicit <laughs> The movie is great in its own way. So just right. go scatter to your corner but you just of saw your stage version. Are I you did. And it, so much stage versions can be bad, too. But this one happened to be pretty good. But the movie is good, too. <laughs> I just don't know why this podcast test I only have two women characters and they have to spend the whole time fighting about musicals. It right? And boys. It seems like... And one of them always likes the movie version and one of them always doesn't. <laughs> it seems like poor writing to me. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, you guys um, got to come in and save us. <laughs> no, we're going to talk about... Anyway, um, and then I recently, totally separate, um, I started watching Playing House because... I okay. This is a really long way to get there, but oh dear God! <laughs> Twitter told me that Zach Woods was in it, and I'm kind of I'm like starting to get obsessed with Zach Woods because of Silicon Valley. Even though I haven't really watched all of Silicon Valley, I've just watched a couple <laughs> of episodes here and there. So then Twitter like ran an ad like, "Oh, catch up on Plain House with Zach Woods," and like he's in that show. And so they started watching. And so you're so obsessed with Zach Woods that Twitter <laughs> is gearing. <laughs> Advertisement to you based on I don't Zach Woods. Search for him. It just happened to show up. I don't know and why. You, and you're so obsessed with him that you stop watching one show that he's on so you can start watching a different <laughs> show that he's on. Also, but Not I found out that Keegan and Michael Key's in, on the show, and I kind of love him too. So he's pretty magical. He's pretty <laughs> magical. So okay, cool. And as always, since you are defending the movie, you don't get to. Talk about something, Laura, that <laughs> doesn't know. We've <laughs> never done that. No, we don't. <laughs> what are you? What are you? Um, I can't remember. I think I may have talked about this podcast before, but because it's on theme and it's older, it's not anything current. 
But the Dead Authors Podcast is a <laughs> glorious podcast uh, hosted by Paul F. Tompkins. He comes on as H.G. Wells, classic sci-fi author, arguably the inventor of the science fiction novel. And the premise is that he literally has a time machine, as of course, you know, he wrote the book Time Machine. But he literally <laughs> has one that he found, and he goes back in time, plucks famous authors out of their time stream and brings them to the present day to interview them at a contemporary comedy club in Los Angeles. And I bring it up because I particularly want to point to the Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm episode, <laughs> which is delightful. It has, um, it has, you know, popular members of the California comedy scene as the different authors. This is Matt Gorley and Jeremy Carter as Wilhelm and Jacob, respectively. You might know from Super Ego, which is also an amazing show. And um, I was there too, James Bonding. Very charming, delightful people. And the episode is just great. And Laura, Jessica St. Clair, and Lennon Parr, I'm a playing house, have all I was just going to say, I forgot to mention the main stars of Playing House, the creators of Playing House, um, Jessica St. Clair and Lennon Parnum. And they are wonderful on that show. I was didn't want to interrupt you, though. No, I, I wanted to after, bring it back but... to you. I could feel that. Yeah. And they're both yeah. terribly funny, wonderful women. And yeah, Laura, Laura likes the movie version of the Dead Authors <laughs> podcast. <buddy. laughs> just a so I think it was called um it was Bill with and Meg, Ted's bogus it, it was with Meg Ryan and <laughs> I was um and um what's his name? Hugh Jackman. Oh yeah. No. Yeah, that one. Are you gonna defend that at some point? <laughs> no, that movie's not very good. <laughs> well since we're in That the, you'll admit. <laughs> since we're interrupting Lauren's thing and talking about our own recommendation. No, I'm done. I, I wanted to say that um I mentioned Miss uh Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, because it takes place at the same time as this movie, like right around the same period. My so. recommendations do not take place at the same time, so you're welcome. The show's poor for it. <laughs> I feel like mine got overshadowed, even though Steven Universe is clearly the best thing that was recommended. Well, we'll just have to and with that, we're done. <laughs> And now's the time, of course, when we do plugs. I, yeah. I, um, unlike usual, don't have too much to plug. We don't have a the, our uh, my improv group, the Upperclassroom, doesn't have a show until August, so just relax on that. But do go to our YouTube page, Upperclassroom Comedy, check out what we've done, uh, especially anything I've done. We um, our sketch show was up in its entirety, and I wrote two of those sketches. Um, uh, one of them, what were they? There was um, the prison. Oh, fre- uh, fresh fish which is the prison one. And there's one, I forget what it's called, but it's about two FBI agents uh, discussing um, South American dictators. Ooh. So check those out. What a hook. Yes. When <laughs> how, is... how do we get there? Uh, it's at, um, on our YouTube page, Upperclassman Comedy. What is a YouTube page? YouTube, it's at HTTP <laughs> uh, colon black, backslash backslash www.youtube.com. Hang on, I'm writing that down. Can go, you do that again? Go to, <laughs> How do you spell YouTube? Go to computer.com and type in show me the upperclassmen and it'll take you right there. Show me the upperclassmen. <laughs> so that's what I'm plugging. When uh, is a Ranger Sam going to be posted? Oh, that's sketch. a good question. Um, uh, hopefully soon. Because um, you just wrote an epic four-part <laughs> yes, sketch. And- Yes, and uh, an amazing it. person helps you produce. Yes, uh, Brooks Davis very oh, wonderfully. <laughs> no, he helped me edit it. Um, Lauren was my uh, co-producer. We'll call you co-director, co-producer, camera camera woman, makeup artist, makeup art. Oh, very good makeup mm-hmm. artist. Yeah, she for Ranger Sam, which is a prop uh, guy. Prop guy, which is a sketch that I made. It's not up yet, but um, if you see it on our classroom comedy, then first AD. check it out, etc. <laughs> Uh, craft services. <laughs> uh, anyone, well, you brought the trail. That's true. So. Anyone else have anything to plug? Anyone want to plug uh, our, uh, Indefensible Man movie stuff? Yeah. Our, no yeah, thanks. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this podcast doesn't really matter. But you guys can go to our um, <laughs> <laughs> Facebook page. <laughs> and I think we might have a YouTube page, too. Yeah, we, we are on YouTube. Uh, what is YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> HTTP. Yeah. Um, if you are listening to us on YouTube, thank you. Thank you for listening, period. You're awesome. But if you wouldn't mind taking an extra step or two and going to the Apple Music app, I think is what they're calling it instead of iTunes. It's, no, it's, it's iTunes. it's called Podcast. It's whatever. the podcast app. Is it the podcast? Okay, yes. whatever. Anyway, rate us on that. Is it the podcast? Okay, yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, rate us on that. Uh, I mean, we'll take five stars if you 
If you think we're worth it, that would be totally <laughs> no. awesome. What are you doing? <laughs> Give us five stars or you're yeah. a bad person. If you want to go to heaven, yeah, five exactly. stars. I mean, this isn't... <gasps> oh my god. This isn't serial where it's doing just fine. They can take your three or four star review. We one, need help, guys. One time someone gave us four stars. They did? And bad things happened. I don't know. <laughs> I backed out of a darker Wait, joke. Are you are you threatening our listeners? <laughs> <laughs> do we have? Do we have a? F- I didn't know you were threatening because you were just laughing as you were doing it. And I was like, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> now I'm gonna look it up. Do we have a four star review? No, I was gonna say one time someone gave us four stars and his name was Heath Ledger. <laughs> oh my God, Bobby! Oh. <laughs> this is <posthumous. laughs> I don't oh, think for how much I love him. I don't like the idea that he would give us four stars. That would hurt my heart. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I guess that's it. Uh, thank you for listening, everyone. And it is very late. It is tomorrow. That's how late it is. Mm-hmm. So, bye. Uh, yeah, night. Mm-hmm. Bye, everyone. Good night. Good morning. Good morning.